throw the doors open, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was amazing. <laughs> Welcome into another episode of Blockchain Basement. My name is TJ. Uh, we do this show here where we hang out on Twitch and chat and talk crypto with you guys, all of our favorite friends here. Uh, we're going to be joined, as always, BJ flying the spaceship, uh, Biscuit Jesus over there on the board. There he is. There he is. There he is. <laughs> and we've got the beautiful Ali B next to me, crypto sunglasses, and everybody's favorite neighbor, crypto prepper, Drew. I did. I followed you on Twitter today. That came I up see. in my suggested. So it was the real one. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, my name, TJ uh, Hit Network on uh, the Twitters. If you guys ever want to tag me, big shout out. I don't know if he's in here today. Big Hands Dan did. Uh, he, I was talking to him in the chat or earlier on the show. He tagged me on Twitter. He said, at Hit Network, here's a glimpse of the connection. Naomi met my mother at a writing. Naomi is my mother. Uh, met through a writing and speaking conference years ago, and he posted this picture of that's actually my mom. Uh, old picture of my mom in awkward family photos with so, her pet monkey. With her pet monkey that I didn't get to meet, unfortunately. That was before my time. So, uh, TJ, what happened over the weekend? Yeah, it was a crazy weekend for any of you that weren't. Uh, we're going to talk about BlockFi going bankrupt, some stuff from uh, Lark Davis on cycles, uh, some more uh, Twitter stuff, and yada yada yada. But uh, the big story over the weekend was uh our trip to the bahamas sam bank no this oh there's nothing there uh sam bankman freed in the bahamas ben uh and crew went down to the bahamas to try to have a conversation with sam get some answers they uh, if you guys were watching the live stream this morning they were out front of <coughs> del tank bank uh who has a relationship with uh tether trying to get some information on that it's a situation ship situation ship yeah so if you guys weren't following uh make sure uh follow on twitter all kinds of crazy stuff so uh nick that was your idea right to kind of for us to go down to the bahamas and start asking some questions look i don't want to brag uh, yeah, but yeah, when it comes to um, hot, spicy ideas uh, at Hit Network, uh, 90, 92% of them are mine. So, <laughs> And yes, Razzmatazz, these sunglasses hurt. My phone was blown up on you guys all weekend. Yeah, thanks, man, Dan. Yeah, it was crazy. I couldn't. I was bummed I didn't get to go. I had to stay home and take care of some stuff here. But uh, Brian is down there. AJ, who is yep. on the show a lot, is down there. Uh, and yep. they... I believe are going to be doing a sit down with the Dell tech. You saw that uh, looks like started to happen live. Who knows what the details will be, but, uh, and it would be wild. If, like there is, it's not dead in the water that there is a chance that Ben could talk to Sam, which if that happened and we could actually pull that off and we could get that interview he, uh, he out there. Him out with, I, so I heard Ben said he's going to send him pizza. Yeah, that and, was, yeah. and he bought him uh the WoW expansion, Dragonflight, so they're going to play together. Some Aww. of this may or may not be true. The Some of it may definitely. or may not be true, yes. But there was, like, for those of you who don't know, you know, there's a lot of jokes on Twitter, everything. You guys definitely should follow. I think yeah. they were doing uh, spaces and things. Uh, I know last night uh, they did an interview with a... Uh, uh, a political figure in the Bahamas who could be a potential running for new president, you know, running mate for a presidency or a candidacy there. Uh, he did a breakdown of, yeah. you know, Lincoln. what's that? I think his name was Lincoln. Lincoln. Yeah, I believe it was. And they said everybody they've met uh, really loves Lincoln down there. So it's been a quite the uh, the crazy weekend, which is good because Bitcoin uh, did absolutely nothing. I mean, we're, we're at a 1.4% change on the seven day for Bitcoin. So just wow. real quick spinning down the prices. Bitcoin still sitting in that 16 range, you know, Ethereum at 1172, uh, Tether at 99, which, you know, that's becoming a story, you know, it shouldn't be a story to report on Tether, but you know, it is these days. Uh, USDC still holding by, you know, XRP, nothing really like really nothing crazy moving. Let's see if anything moved. So CeeLo on the week, Ape up on the week because Ape, you know, had a lot of uh, drama going on with the staking, not staking, Chili, some of this stuff down. No. So, yeah, not a lot going on with the markets. Um, What's Solana at now? Solana? Let's see. How much of its cap has it lost? It was down, I think, around like $13 last time I saw it and it seemed to be holding there. Yeah, $13.41. Okay. So seems to be holding in this range pretty good. It'll drop below, get bought back up. Let's look at the week. Yeah, it seems to have... Like this was the ultimate. It fell all the way to eleven, I think, on the <clears throat> initial drop. Mm -hmm. But it seems to that seems to be the real actual floor for whatever reason. Yeah. So let, let, let's talk about that. Uh, a lot of people saying Solana, you know, like 
we're hearing some rumors about some negativity on Solana and not this chain itself, but other projects that were built on it, the way Alameda was able to use it to kind of pump and move their bags. Do you think anybody in here, do you think there's a chance Solana recovers from this uh, connection to FTX and Alameda or is it just, is it dead in the water? Uh, Nick, what do you think? Oh, Drew, sounds like you have something. Okay, Drew, yeah. You think so? I don't think No, I don't. Long term, isn't it? D God. One of the major dudes. Uh, so they're saying Drew is muted. Maybe. No. Wow. No sound. Can't hear. Your mic is off. Somebody's mic is off. Everything uh, he was saying was very intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. I I kind of I kind of agree, but differently than uh, Drew. I think Solana's burnt so many of their developers now that the development talent is just going to skip over it. I mean, mm. what is the actual? What's the upside to using Solana at the moment? <laughs> Who's um, slow tight sound coming in hot? First slow time tide. chat. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, buddy. I love it. Kids show. And it's okay. the basement. This isn't the kids' show. This is, oh, it's not? No. Yeah, no. All this right. is where the... Aunt, Fuck Solana. Yeah. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. No, this <laughs> no, does still have to end up on YouTube. I'm just saying it's not, oh, you man. know. Well, not, okay, well, yeah. We I are mean, safe if, on Twitch right now while we're live. If you're a developer and, like, DeFi Land... DeFi Land had a really great project. It was gamified DeFi. You, like... It was basically Farmville, but you used actual money and you had, like, crops and stuff, and that was your yield farm. And it was fun, and it was a great way to get like Gen Z onboarded into crypto. And that project's basically dead at this point. And I hope to God that they move on to like an actual blockchain like Cardano. But if you're that kind of project, I mean, you just had so many years of work just ruined mm -hmm. um, because of nothing you did. All right. Yeah, I tend to, I tend to agree. I think Solana will be, it will always be there, I think, as a chain. Like, I think we'll see it as a similar chain, you know, like an EOS or a Tron or some of those other ones that are around. But price speculation, price... Like, look, if you're trying to buy the absolute bottom, it might recover a little bit and, and hold a certain equilibrium in a certain range. But I think next cycle when alts are pumping, I don't think it's going to be one of the big movers. I mean, no. obviously, that we've got some time to see. And, you know, the alts in the next altcoin <laughs> cycle is a little ways out there. But uh, I there's no not enough upside to be going into Solana for me right now. I'd be looking at other uh, but, uh, at other chains. So, yeah. TJ, I want to know from you, and I was thinking about doing a video about this. Okay. Um what is the market cap going to get to in the next bull run? Where do you think we're going to go? Because it's always been the high watermark for Bitcoin is $10 trillion, right? right? Do for, you think we could actually get to $10 trilly? Like we barely for broke... The total one. cap, right? Total cap, yeah. Total cap, let's see, what do well, we Well, no, hit? no, no, I mean Bitcoin market cap. Oh, Bitcoin by itself. Yes. Mm. No, so I don't, no, I don't think there's any way we hit $10 trillion for Bitcoin in the next cycle. Like I got, it'd be great if the entire crypto market cap hit $10 trillion, which, That would be bananas. Right now, it looked like we hit approximately 2.8 uh according oh, 2. Okay. according to this for total crypto market cap last you know last bull run mm -hmm. at the Gosh. peak uh you know that's and that was 1 trillion in uh bitcoin yeah. approximately and then yeah. the other you know you know whatever 1.8 and everything else so yep. if we could hit mm, even 10 trillion for everything would be a it's a pretty big jump um, so this, and it all depends on the bitcoin dominance at that point so like a like a 5 trillion dollar bitcoin that means it would be a 50% Bitcoin dominance, right? Yes, if we had a $10 trillion yeah, cap. Trillion but generally service. speaking, at the peak of the bull market is when you're going to have a low dominance. It's you're going to be probably near 20 25% Bitcoin dominance at that point. Okay. And Orbison so many... is saying um, gold market cap is $10 trillion? I thought it was like 34 No, it's actually 11 point It's 11 Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I, pro I mean, I've always down. said 10 as approximate, but I could. that's been a long time since I've looked at that. So let's yeah. look. Yeah, because yep. didn't they supposedly find like thirty-four trillion dollars awesome. gold under Uganda? Whatever. Yeah, gold I, I or got to get it out. Though. Yeah, gold yeah, or yeah. deposits, and that's yeah. a big difference between gold and gold deposits because the cost of getting it out of the ground is your number one. That's like saying, "Oh, well, there's still you know three or four million Bitcoin <laughs> left to be mined, right?" So yeah. there's lots of Bitcoin. It's like, well, yeah, yeah. but you got to spend all the resources to to actually mine it. And it's very similar. The market cap of silver. Go well here. I can do that. Market cap of silver. Oh, silver. I don't know. Should I, I check know. my pocket? Yeah. The most manipulated precious metal oh, yeah, on the planet. Yeah, was... Ooh. He has, this man has actual amazing. silver coins. That sounded good. Hey. You gotta, you gotta have... 
By the way, that's what I'm going to be paying the fantasy football prize in. in Silver? Uh, in uh, gold, uh, the uh, dollar coins. Yeah. One, okay. This is saying $3 billion as of November 25th, 2022, what? but I can't. That can't be right. Most commonly measuring. Sounds that's what it says. Uh, but real quick, uh, J-Dub says, live in the Bahamas, going to try to meet Ben Wally series, helping the country big time with what he's doing. He truly is for the people. Ben DMing him on Twitter while he's here. Well, awesome. He's, I'm sure he's getting a lot of DMs. He will try to look through all of those. Oh, look at that. We're double dipping today. This today's show brought, brought to you by Waterloo. Waterloo. Wow. Shout out to Waterloo. Sponsor us. Yeah. They keep us lubricated. Not yet. Uh, what's up, basement dwellers? I see SBF lives in your head rent free. Yeah, that is pretty pretty true. At this point, he has been uh, living in a lot of our heads rent free. Sonic losses. That did sound exactly like Sonic losing his rings when he, <laughs> oh. when he dropped those coins. That was the exact sound. I knew I it was bringing me back to some kind of <laughs> yeah. nostalgia trigger. So Q and A uh, from the chat. Trigger. Yeah. Q &A. Razmataz said, "How about that two billion of bit." Uh, Bitcoin from Binance today. Yes, they. I think they came out and already stated that was for a proof of audit. They needed an auditor that basically just asked them to make that transfer so they could see how the wallets work together, which was interesting, or interact, how they do their storage. So I, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, do you think, let me ask you this, proof of reserves and proof of reserves audits, do you think that will be relevant? You think we'll still be talking about that two years from now? I, I do. Absolutely. Yeah. Do yeah. I, I definitely do. I, we're going to see it formed in a more concise legal requirement matter but yeah like merkle tree you think it'll be a standard going forward i i do um yeah i don't see really any way around it right now even if i'd want to i i think it's great honestly um and i'm all for it uh, but yeah i don't think that there's any way that the that large uh institutional investors can find an interest uh, without that moving forward in the long term so, i could hear that I, yeah. I feel like it's getting a little like, yes, it's relevant. Yes, it matters. Uh, it is important. We do need more transparency in the space. I do feel like it's getting a little too much attention, if that makes it. It's getting yeah. a little too, like, everybody, anytime an exchange moves something, like, oh, what's going on? Do they have what they're supposed to have? And it's like, yeah, like, they move this stuff around. Having a uh, an audit is great, but still, you don't want to have to be trusting them anyway, right? Mm. You still want to be removing the stuff. We covered it on the morning stream today. Having users withdrawing funds from exchanges is healthy for the market. Having retail self-custody is healthy. Now, obviously, we need to have places where custody is available, where you can have a third party help You know, people that don't want to self-custody because it isn't. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier today than it was five, ten years ago, but it's still not approachable to non-technical people in a lot of different ways. So mm. um, I think it's moving in the right direction. I do think it's a little hyper-focused right now, but I get, I agree. I think it's it's for the best in the long, long run. So uh, let's jump into this story real quick. A couple things. Main thing I wanted to touch on, you know, new BTC minor capitulation, which we were talking about a little bit this morning. This is kind of the, the ultimate and uh, last bottom signal in a lot of ways. And then five things to know in Bitcoin this week. I'm going to spend a, a little bit more on the Bitcoin capitulation because I do think it's an interesting uh, discussion. Basically, uh, like others, Bitcoin miners are seeing a major squeeze when it comes to the selling of accumulated BTC and profit. Um, right now, Bitcoin difficulty is really high for miners. That means the cost of getting a high, the costs are getting higher of doing business in this kind of environment is getting harder, he wrote. That's why miners do not work in full force. Uh, if they have efficient new generation mining machines, they put them into work. But that's all. Inflation is high and people feel the effects of living costs. Bitcoin prices declining. Mining costs difficult to getting higher. And here's this is the hash ribbons right here. Uh, let's mm. see if it has. A... So you've got BTC price, BTC hash rate, you know, moving along the price being the black the purple and yellow lines being the 30-day moving average for the hash rate. So here you can see, there it is, uh, price falling, meaning you know the rewards you're getting is going down, but the difficulty literally through the roof right here uh, yeah. when it came to hash rate. So meaning the cost is getting exponentially higher. higher the cost of mining a Bitcoin now is way higher than it was back here at the peak of the market or even back mm -hmm. here. You know, like at the peak of the market, you were... This was your cost, and this is what you were selling. So you had all this margin in the middle, all that gap there to be covering your cost. Now you're actually selling at a loss or at a break even, and, and uh, power laws are going or power prices are going all uh, up dramatically. 
uh, which is making putting a really serious squeeze on uh, on the miners. Mm -hmm. Which, generally speaking, that's when everybody says, "Oh, the miners are going to turn all their mining equipment off. Bitcoin's going to zero. How are we going to keep the market up if you can't afford to mine?" Yada yada yada. Um, but this is the key thing here: estimates for BTC.com for the next adjustment on December sixth puts the difficulty drop at 6.4% at the time of writing. So it's yeah. it's important to note that when you see this play out, this difficulty will adjust down just like it had been adjusting up everything here. So here's, here's the last downward adjustment, which you can see kind of, I don't think they're directly related necessarily, but the last downward adjustment, boom, we saw prices go up. They probably sold a lot into these profits. So we're not going to have as big of a downward adjustment, but say you could adjust the price down here just a little bit. Uh, that will give a little bit of relief to Bitcoin miners, um, you know, moving forward, obviously. So uh, what do you think when it comes to, do you think that's going to have a dramatic impact, Nick, or is it just going to be business as usual? Miners keep mining. Nobody's really turning anything off and they just keep, they just keep rolling. No, I think it's actually going to time perfectly with the huge pull down we're going to see in 2023, just across all markets mm -hmm. everywhere. Uh, there's going to I all the smart money and all the smart people are saying that there's going to be a massive, massive capitulation event in 2023. <clears throat> I heard that housing prices are going to come down another 40 percent. Hell yeah. 40 yeah. percent. You think Fours, so? that's what I've been hearing? That seems like so much. It's never that's yeah. what happened like once. I think there's only been three real estate drawdowns over 20 yep. percent in history. Yep. Um, that'd be, do you if, think that? Um, Mortgage rates are going to go up to like eight percent or something no. as well. You no, think I think I think the Fed's going to Fed's going to put their foot, pull their foot off the gas. They're not going to hit the brakes. They're not going to start reversals. But, um, yeah. So now, let's say forty percent. The guy was saying forty percent in some markets. I think on yeah. average it will be twenty. But you could see in the bigger markets like San Francisco. Holy crap. That's going to be a 40% drawdown. Like it right. has to. Yeah. It's I, so I always want people to highlight that demographic is going to matter a lot. Yes. When we're talking about the drawdowns. Yes. You know, like um, rural Wyoming is going to go up because the riches are going there. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it still hasn't had as big enough of a pullback as 2008. And we are, we have a lot of the same fundamentals of 2008, except for, you know, the, the bubble with the mortgages, but that's just, that's just coming. Um, it will be timed out perfectly. Uh, we'll see the mining, the difficulty go below the price. Like it will actually re re go back to the mean, like what you had in that chart. Mm -hmm. The mining difficulty will be under price again, and that's where it should be. Mm. Um, side tangent: Beard Lance is saying it sucks that we can't talk about specific protocols and speculation anymore. I feel like that's what we do down here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah we We're yeah. definitely yeah. do that here. Yeah, yeah. 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 shout out to that? Slow Tide Sound for being an absolute chud and boosting our engagement. So <laughs> yes, you can continue to FUD us in the chat, but it doesn't matter because you're boosting our engagement. Joke's on you. Yeah. Wait, where is he? He's, Slow tide he's, sound. I've been trying to follow uh, exactly what he's meaning. He's just saying Ben's a scammer. He yeah. should be arrested. You're really forgetting he promoted Yeah, we, we did promote FTT. At the beginning of the year, we had it as a top pick because we uh, traditionally uh, exchange tokens have done really well in bear markets. We were yep. looking at one of the top up and coming exchanges had their own exchange token. Mm -hmm. uh, so like, hey, this could be a, a top performer, just like BNB was when yep. uh, Binance was coming up. Yep. Um, Everybody got conned. But what yeah. people choose to forget is that we were some of the first people to say, GTFO. When yeah, we dug yeah. into it. And we're like, wait a minute, something something smells fishy here. You know, yep. get get out of this. So yeah, because you know. guess what, Slow Tide. Uh, when you're presented with new information, intelligent people reevaluate their position when new data comes in. Instead of just being a homer for the project that you've latched onto, you pivot. Mm -hmm. So that's what Ben does, and that's what TJ do all the time. We get in new data, tons of data, and then we tell our audience when we verify that it's legit. And so we were one of the first people to say. Actually, FTT may not be all that great. Yeah. And then Ben was like, actually, SBF is the devil. Yeah. And well, then speaking we were the of laughing stocks until we were right. Yep. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, pivot and stuff, the, the, we got the next Fed meeting coming up. Uh, I think it's is the, it the 13th. Fifth? The 13th? Yeah. yeah the, oh, the 5th is the, um, not the jobs report, but the uh, inflation report. In, uh, yeah. The inflation numbers or the CPI. So there's yeah. a handful <laughs> of things come out. The 5th, the 5th. 13th and the uh there's one other one to keep an eye on is it gdp stuff. Uh, but 0.5 everybody feels like that's a lock at this point another 0.5 yes. raise yep yeah 
Drew? Maybe I don't know. I'm a fan of chaos. I could see another seven five. Just oh my god. Just for just yeah. Okay. You know, so, just for shits and gigs. Just when, for shits. Because everybody's gigs. talking about well, when do you think the Fed will pivot? What what is a Fed pivot? Is the next meeting point five? That's par. A no raise is that considered par or is that considered a pivot? Like in January, if we have another meeting and there's a no raise in January, I think the no raise would be a huge pivot in January. And oh, in January, I'm talking next year. Next year. Or not January, but 2023. Uh, by then, they'd only be at a 4.25 funding rate, I believe, if they only did one. If they leave January and February alone, they're not reaching their overall 5% 5% Fed funding rate. So I think that they'd be, in, in from what I've That been would be following, considered a pivot. Yeah. No, no raise be, next year would be considered a pivot. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, right. I tend to agree with Nick. I think we're going to see a 0.5 yeah. raise next, and I think they're going to hold all through next Got year. Yep. Let the banks pad their balance Got sheets it. a little bit, you know, make that money on that interest, mm -hmm. uh, get a little bit more solvent on their side of things. It's going to put the max pain on the citizens, of course, and everybody here uh, in the U.S. and around the world, really, uh, experiencing the inflation. Uh, I do think housing prices are going to get hit. I, do, I don't think it's going to be much more than 20% uh, aggregate across the board. Uh, and I don't think it's going to be as, like, sure, the overbought certain places mm -hmm. might get hit, but I don't think it's going to be like what we experienced in 2008 where you saw, you know, Phoenix, Arizona absolutely get destroyed, you know, like very specific markets mm. get 50, 60% because there's a lot, there basically was a lot of mortgage fraud going on there yeah. that just completely wiped it out. And none of those values were based on anything. This is a little bit, I don't I think it's going to be a little bit more different. I think it's going to be a slower, um, slower draw because it's not nearly as like, in 2008, all those mortgage rates adjusted at the same time, and yeah. everybody had to panic sell, and everybody mm -hmm. immediately couldn't make their payments, and they were losing jobs on top of it. Where now, if you can maintain, you know, you're probably anybody who has been buying for the last 10 years or so, they've got a really good rate. They're just not going to be able to move. So the demand is going to go away completely for real estate. It's the new home builders are going to get crushed, which that has a, a long uh, tail impact on the rest of the economy when you talk about builders and windows and development and materials yep. and serve, you know, all the mm -hmm. things that come into building a home and new, new development, basically. Mm -hmm. And I think yep. that's where you're going to see it get hit the most yep. is new construction. Yeah. Uh, May I'm a Lucifer. Um, I think crypto is basically, in my opinion, a leading indicator of the markets because yep. we have a lot more volatile, just our money is a lot faster. Um, and we're also an anti-fragile system. So we get shaken out way, way faster than traditional systems that are propped up by regulation. So the capitulation event will happen to crypto. It's already happened basically to crypto. There will be a little bit more of a down leg, but 2023 is when like the markets, that's when you're going to see like Jim Cramer with his head in his hands, mm. like unemployment is going to fill that gap between the jobs that we've been needing and the people who have not been looking are suddenly going to start being like, oh crap, I need to look for a job and they're not going to find anything. There are there's been such a pullback on remote work mm. um, and everyone kind of wants that remote work job. And then you can flick through TikToks and as people like I'm at work right now and they're like sitting on their couch watching Netflix yeah. and like every, <laughs> you bet every employer on the planet sees those videos and they're like, yeah, screw this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's scary as an employer to imagine, you know, someone just kind of hanging out like those Twitter uh, TikToks and the lady mm -hmm. went oh my gosh. visited Twitter. Like, oh I, know. My, I would have had a, an aneurysm if yeah. I was her boss. Like that would have driven me nuts. Um, gosh, I saw a question from Slow Tide Sound. He said Fed Pivot would be the last bottom, you think? Yeah, I mean, that's, I see, this is how agnostic I say. I want to answer your question, even though. Well, no, that's, that. see, that's the thing. We change with new information. They change their tune. Cool. Mm. That's cool. Mm. I don't think he changed his tune. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> I think. With it. Okay. With it. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a drawn out bottom, I feel like. It's just, it kind of plays into what Nick's saying. I, I don't think that uh, the production ability of BASF, which is the mainstay of where all chemicals, uh, for the majority of production derived from out of Germany. They're having a horrible time with raw material production right now. Yep. Um, so those effects are going to be felt in the workforce for a long time. So, yeah, I mean, there's definitely some uh, some pain to come in 2023. I don't think that the Fed pivots necessarily has the ability to mark the bottom in and of itself. Yeah, well, and it, it, you, the crazy thing is the bottom generally, you're not going to know it until in retrospect obviously yep. so Afterwards. I, we could be at the bottom right now that 15 we just experienced last week could have been the bottom on the fear of the genesis uh mm -hmm. yep. bankruptcy or just yeah, i still think capital, we are uh 
Uh, PUBG Mobile, yes, this is a daily live stream. This is the post uh, show, morning show, after show, you could say, Blockchain Basement. We do it uh, downstairs every day, Monday through Friday, live on Twitch. So if you're on Twitch, you can uh, put it in the live chat. If you see it other places, that's the best place to watch it live. Uh, of course, uh, always uh, subscribe to us on all the different channels and all the different places. You can find us all over the place. Uh, first time watching X Tinfoil Hat. First time watching Hello from Canada. You you can call us China. Yeah, well, we do. Wow. Okay, I'm sorry. That's I'm an extra large tinfoil hat, actually. Oh, extra large XL. tinfoil hat. Yeah, yeah, thank you. See, I'm hey, terrible at those. We can get along. This economy? So, XL, are you guys about to have like a nationwide protest? That's because China-da. that's what's happening in China right China-da. now. China, yeah, that's a good way to say <laughs> China-da. it. So. China, yeah. oh my god. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll be vague, but yeah, I guess chi- or, uh, China, <laughs> Canada. Um, apparently, they added some new um, mental illnesses. If you don't agree with them, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We That's were talking. All I'm wow. We were talking, but uh, in Beijing or, or over our Eastern friends, we were talking about that right before the show. And I, I do have. I think I pulled up. We'll show it right. At, we'll show it. Towards the end, where's your thing, VJ? It's in there. It's scary. Oh. If no one's checking out what's at Foxcom in China right now, like it's definitely worth a look. Is this it? This, yeah, here you go. Witness humanity oh, fighting it. for its right. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, this God, is, uh, how do I do this? How do these this, buttons work? This is, uh, oh, let's see, the largest quarantine camp um, right now. Pronounce it, TJ. I'm not going to pronounce Gongzhou. it. I'll try. Gongzhou. I just figured, I was just trying to think if. Wow, wow, we were. I don't, we don't uh, need sound. Hey, we'll play the Benny Hill music. Justin Trudeau, <laughs> Justin Trudeau pleasures himself to this video. Yeah, yeah this is uh, uh, wow. quarantine camps being constructed. And uh, we were talking about it a little bit before. And I don't know if some of you guys follow Michael Burry of uh, the big short fame. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has been known. And I don't know how much of this is accurate. I don't actually go look at his portfolios himself. But some people, fo- show, some people follow what he trades or what his hedge fund trades. And allegedly, he had been out of all markets or short all markets, you know, extreme, being extreme bullish. I, again, this is rumored. I didn't confirm this for myself. I've seen this. I've seen some people say it was true. Some people say it wasn't that he has gone all in on prison and insane stocks, basically <laughs> betting on the fact that they will be locking a lot of people up for what they're calling mental illness yeah. uh, in the future. And that's basically what BJ was alluding to. If you do not take the required health, um, the required health what are you even donations calling? or yeah. uh, the, the things that the government <laughs> thinks you need for your health, you will be put into these camps. Uh, mm-hmm. So scary times out there. Is um, nuts. And I, I thought it was total BS. And I yeah. was like, no. Well, and then. Yeah, so wait, that's not BS? No. That was China. That was China, guys. Not Imagine that, how no, The other thing I was talking about, like literally there's several Canadian press releases from the government talking about it. That you're like, how is this actually real? Well, hang on. So wait, they're actually doing that? They're listing that as a mental... Yep. Or as a Hairless. disease. Yes. Okay, yeah. because they just implemented a month ago that um, a Canadian residents uh, can now get doctor assisted suicide yes. or yep. doctor assisted unaliving for mental health problems. Oh my God. So if you're depressed, <laughs> if you are if, depressed, if you have yeah. clinical depression and you just don't see any end in sight, you can go to a Canadian doctor and they can unalive you. It's a dissident disorder. Is that well, what they're uh, calling Well, Tinfoil Hat, if you need to move south, you know. Yeah. Hey, holler at your boy. Yeah. yeah. Tinfoil Hat. It's, Look, it's getting if crazy. You need, up if there. you want to come to America, don't come through the northern border. You have to take a boat, come all the way around, coming through the bottom. You can just walk right yeah. in. Yeah, it's no problem anymore. <laughs> wow, this is uh, hard to do. All right, I'm going to keep us moving. I'm going to try to, you know, <laughs> keep us from not getting canceled completely here. Uh, but Tinfoil Hat, you're very welcome because uh, we have a lot of Tinfoil Hat theories as well. Uh, fun fact somebody else who's just moving into the building here. It, they're, they have a show called, I think it's called Tinfoil Hat or something like that, where literally, if, if you imagine this set, just imagine everything except for this little microphone cover being uh, covered in tinfoil. They're all, all their amazing. clothes, their couch, mm. the desk, Wait, everything. Thing? Yeah, they're going to, they're going to, they so do excited. it. Yeah, they that's just awesome. moving in uh, today. His name's uh, Brian. He's a cool guy. So they do Are it. they going to talk about conspiracies? Yeah, that's the whole, that's oh the whole thing. Goodness. Conspiracy Jeez. theories. So it awesome. might be another show uh, to keep an eye on here uh, coming out of Hit Network or hit, the Hit Factory. Mm. So, uh, but speaking of theories, we're, gonna, we're talking about next year. We were talking about 2023 being a pretty negative year. We've talked a lot about the four year having cycles. This is something both Ben and I, 
uh, believe in 100%. And until it ha it changes, I'm going to you know keep using this theory. So this is something Lark put out. I thought it was a pretty good graph that shows you know here you know here's cycle one accumulation period, cycle two accumulation period, bull run three accumulation period. And so he says, no, no new highs until sometime in 2024, market peak in 2025, which is right in line with everything we've been saying on this yeah. channel. But if history rhymes, then a big bull rally in 2023 up to about 48,000 is this time different. So that's what he's talking about. Mm. Generally speaking, we see these uh, like in this range here. Uh, I can't see the date along the bottom here, but you can see this is accumulation <laughs> zone. Boom. We had a big run up still came all the way back down before the next bull run. Uh, we had one similarly here on, you know, where you have sideways, sideways, a little run up, which precedes the having and then the big bull run. Wow. Uh, so if we're in this range here, we're say we've bottomed and we're in accumulation, you know, my theory, and this is, I was talking with Ali about this before, right before I saw this tweet, I was like, hey, man, it's almost like I'm not making this stuff up. But my, what I was saying is I think we could trade in a really tight range right now, like between 17 and 28, mm -hmm. you know, really tight, and then a big run up to about 40K and then fall right back into that range before the next halving, um, which would be extremely consistent with the last halvings. But to Drew's point, we're in a much different macro environment than we ever have been. Mm. Uh, can, you know, when it comes to previously all like this bull run, this bull run, and even this bull run was all money printer was going. The Fed was dropping rates and we were increasing the supply of the dollar. This cycle will be the first time when the dollar is in quote unquote tightening. I mean, obviously we're still printing more, but we're printing a lot less more than we were the last 10 years or so. Are mm -hmm. we still printing? We're, no. we're printing, just not printing as Only much. Only Janet Yellen in the form of bond buybacks. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah. She's being sneaky. About Urkel it. Urkelson with conspiracy theories. You mean advanced news? Yeah. Right. Yes. You mean you mean cutting edge information? You mean actual <laughs> news? Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, Mayamo Nick D says this is his favorite side character. Well, don't tell him he's a side character. He's a, he's a main character in his story. <laughs> We're all a side character in someone else's play. That's right. But so okay. But my question is, with a different macro environment, do you think we still see this same you know mid cycle run? So like. Uh, last cycle, we were between 7 and 10, 7 and 10, and we pushed all the way up to 14, and everybody's screaming all-time highs again, and then we fell right back down. Do you think there's a chance we experience that in 2023, a push all the way back up to 40, which is that key level? If we break through it, everybody's going to be screaming for all-time highs again. We're not too far away. It's within striking distance. Mm -hmm. Do you think that plays out, or do you think it's just slow and boring or just more downward pressure throughout all next year based on the macro? Either Anybody? You go, Nick. Man, I don't know. All it's right. a, it's a tough answer. one. Yep. I feel like we're going to be like capped out at $25,000 for Bitcoin until 2023 is completed. I think that mainstream media and uh, heads of governments as they organize institutional involvement with this technology is going to keep people's heads as low as possible with the strongest fear and the strongest suppression still available to them to make sure that the fewest amount of retail is involved with it as possible. Um, before we get into the 24 and 25 uh, time frame. So I think we're going to get capped at 25 within this year. It's going to be very painful. It's going to shake a lot of people out, break a lot of confidence, a lot of mindsets, and then it will take off um, in 2024. That's how I feel. Okay. Uh, as you said, didn't they say that stuff too in 2017 about the macro uh, yeah, they were generally positive, though, in 2017. You know, the macro, mm. even the, around the world, like there might have been some negative macro news, but not not like there is today. Not threats mm. of impending wars. And you know, I mean, there's always threats of impending mm. wars, but yeah. not to the level of what we're experiencing right now. Uh, it's going to be a long 2023. Yeah. I tend to agree with that. <laughs> but um, look at the bright side. Then you get all that time to yeah. collect the good Accumulation stuff. Accumulation you know? zone, my people. TJ, do you think there's going to be as much leverage trading in the next cycle or do you think it will be um you'll see a resurgence of spot trading like in previous cycles because this one was all leverage basically uh, i think there'll still be a ton of i mean it'll be both i think you'll okay. see more leverage because it, like what we saw was institutions getting in and leveraging themselves to the hill i don't i think we'll see more responsible leverage <clears throat> and people like a more maintained leverage so more leverage trades of high volume, less reckless leverage, if that makes sense. So okay. you're going to see bigger money coming in and using two, three, four, five X. 
versus small money going 100x. Yep. You know, if like big guys swinging for the fences, you're going to have more responsible leverage. You know, people probably that are more experienced, not, and I'm not talking individual traders as much as I'm talking shops and yep. big money. And we're going to start to see, like, we saw the, I think this cycle represented the most aggressive side of trade fi coming yep. into crypto yeah and that's kind of what led us to a lot of the situation that we saw unfold oh, for sure people swinging for the fences and it was working man we were hitting home run after home run after home run and they just kept swinging until eventually they struck out i think we're going to see a lot more of the slower moving ones the ones that said you know what look we're going to because probably they have a lot more capital mm -hmm. we're going to wait until we have a, a green light from the regulators and then we're going to deploy in a way that we know will work 100% and it will, you know, really push, I think, push the price up, you know, then, the, then the hype and the speculation comes back in even more. You see retail get involved. Um, so, you know, that's, you know, just my two cents. I mean, who knows? We'll see. But I also think you're seeing similarly nation states, the most aggressive, hyper active nation states that are trying to make the biggest move up the ladder the fastest yep. those are the ones getting involved right now yep. the other ones like ah, i don't know like you know if we're in the middle i don't want to make any waves i don't want to get any trouble like we have a plan once we're greenlit we're in but we're not we're not shaking you know uh rocking the boat so to speak yeah. and you know getting the imf coming down on it el salvador's like fine bring it like you're not doing mm. us any favors anyway yeah we're at the yeah. bottom of the stack we're willing to you know be aggressive and shake it up you know, if you're Brazil or somebody that's kind of has your positioning, you're jockeying, you're trying to get in there. You don't want to, you don't want the United States mad at you, but you still want to take advantage of this opportunity. You know, and that's what I think next cycle, we're going to see some of those big uh, nation states getting after us as well. Salvador going to look like an MFG in two years. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. We'll have to wait and see, or, you know, or, or sometimes the big money of the world knows how to make you teach you a lesson for stepping out of line. So let me, mm. let me ask you that. Does El Salvador's bet to jump in first, does it pay off major and they have a big economic boom and growth in the world standing or do they get held down even more? What do you think, Nick? Um, I think El Salvador is going to be fine because the forces that would have been trying to push them down, uh, they took their uh, energy policy from a 16-year-old girl, and now they've completely shit their pants. How dare So they have big, big problems to deal with right now. So this is El Salvador's moment to kind of become basically like the Liechtenstein of uh, Central America. Mm. Yeah, I, I saw, I don't know if it was over the weekend or last week that they were starting to... I don't know, sell shares or whatever, or yeah. uh, volcano bonds. Yeah, bo bonds for the <laughs> yeah. volcano for Bitcoin mining, which yeah. is just crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that they're going to be. I think that I mean they're probably going to be one of the most technologically advanced cities in forty years from now. They're sure. probably, you know, I think that they're going to be an economic powerhouse from getting ahead of this. And BRICS is absorbing people. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. Brazil is not on the U.S. side. I mean, maybe they don't, They if they didn't want to make the U.S. upset, they wouldn't have joined the overall program anyways. So yep. it, there's a disconnect happening. There's a team being formed that's outside of ours, and we are the existing system. It's mm -hmm. if we're going to change our dinosaur system into what it's becoming, or we will watch BRICS take advantage of this technology and blast past us. Yeah. So, yeah. I agree. Uh T. Solly said, I'm giving off dad vibes today. Like the dad that sits you down and teaches you a life lesson after he did, after doing something naughty. I don't know if you guys did anything naughty. Stay away from that dirty fiat, you know, but, yeah. uh, you know. I like that dad bod crypto. That's pretty good. <sighs> that is a good one. Uh, crypto <laughs> Thorn asked, how much of an investment do you think it will take to become a millionaire by 2025? A millionaire by 2025? You know, how much of an investment into crypto? Depends on what you buy right now. I mean, yeah, I'm sure it depends on what you buy. I'm sure, like, what's what's a good number? One uh, Bitcoin. I'd say 20k is a solid number to, that you yeah. could like. You could get in with 20k and turn that into a million. No, you'd have to be pretty aggressive. You'd have to mm -hmm. catch some luck and some trades or whatever. But I'd say that's about right. And you guys agree? Disagree? Yeah, I mean, you yeah, have to have a huge caveat to that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That 20k to a million—that's a super aggressive. It would be. Uh, It'd be very aggressive. high risk, high reward. You're outside of the top 25. Yeah, you're definitely yeah. looking underneath yeah. the, the couch for different projects right there. Um, you know, if you're working within the blue chips, I'd probably say you need about 150 to 200k into yep. it. Yeah, Hodel um, Gang says 100k. But yeah, like, I mean, and you definitely could do it with even 10K if you chose the right project right now mm -hmm. and it was yep. there in 2025 in the top 20, you you did it, but that's hard to do right now. Where to put the 20 um, bucks? Yeah, where to put, put the 20 bucks? Just put it in Ethereum. 
Ethereum. No, put it in Bitcoin. We should talk about Ethereum, TJ. All right. Yeah. You want to talk about it? You, you want to talk about the consensus? Yeah. Uh, do you want to make some clips? Because we we're going to get some about clips Ethereum out of it's this. still relevant. Oh, exactly. Here we go, guys. Yeah. All right. <laughs> come on with the. Come on with everybody who thinks Ethereum's going down, except nothing's been close to competing with it yet. So mm. uh, that's what all right. They said so about Prodigy consensus, uh, which a lot of you guys know, also supports MetaMask, which was a big thing. Updates. Updates collect IP and Ethereum addresses data. Oh yeah, via MetaMask. So mm -hmm. a lot of people were talking about this. To me, like I was kind of baffled that this was such a huge news and everybody was freaking out about it. It's only because I thought it was obvious that when JP Morgan owned <laughs> MetaMask and has a vested interest in consensus, like of course they're collecting data on their users. That's the value of the bit of the business, right? That's yep. why they invested in it was to get that information. So you know now should it be done is a whole different, you know, uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. Basically, Infura will log IP and Ethereum addresses in MetaMask. It's easy to switch alternative uh, PRC provider. Uh, That's a typo. Should be RPC. RPC. That's what I was saying. It's like PRC. RPC. Yep. Uh, basically, change the network and the, the way you're routing through the nodes uh, for privacy's sake. There are ways you can still work around it. Uh, Nick, is this a big deal? Does this matter? Yes, it matters. Why? So this matters because consensus is an arm of the World Economic Forum. Joseph Lubin, who is the president of consensus, uh, is a WF member, even though they just took him off their website. Uh, they made that page unavailable. Also uh, a co-founder of Ethereum. Also a co-founder of Ethereum, but he's been big into centralization basically since day one. The dude used to work for fucking Goldman Sachs. So he is a TradFi World Economic Forum hack. He does not believe in crypto. He is anti-crypto. And consensus is their way of bridging, uh, of basically destroying DeFi and making a CBDC. Mm. So anything consensus touches, in my opinion, is cancer for crypto. Uh, this is one of the ways, I mean, it's completely unnecessary. You don't have to log IP addresses to do anything in crypto. That's the whole, it's the antithesis of it. Mm -hmm. It's just a data mining operation because they want to have more location-based, they want to tie your MetaMask address to your location, mm -hmm. find ways to pin you down and to make those transactions uh, to block them out for a CBDC. That's one of well, the main ways. A lot more than that. If uh, I can show you guys when we go on your MetaMask, it's by default, it's set to log all in, all data on all websites unless you yeah. change that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which the, is true of most apps yeah. across any phone or, you know, like that's something to be noted is that's what most applications that you use on the day to day basis do. They log all your information everywhere you go. So they can sell your data. I mean, yep. that's, you know, now I agree that is not what crypto is about. Yep. You're mm -hmm. supposed to have privacy. You're not supposed, you're supposed to have access to your own data information. Uh, and I, I, I agree. This is a conversation that needs to happen. Uh, there are workarounds. Uh, Riddle with Pun says, I created custom RPC using Alchemy, which a lot of people were talking about so they can track my IP. Most, a lot of people, a lot of people in the chat saying, well, don't you use the VPN anyway, but Doesn't it's the matter. principle of the matter. I'm not down with this move by consensus. And I yeah. think that's the biggest thing is this is a crypto company, so to speak, a, you know, a blockchain uh, industry player that's had a, yeah. a key role in development on Ethereum that is um, collecting all your information basically. And for what purpose and to what end are they selling it to governments? Are they selling it to tax officials, IRS? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what are they doing with the data is the yeah. question. You know, we should be selling our data to them, not them harvesting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree completely. Yeah. I think yeah. that's what should be done in a situation like this. I think that's a better proposed solution is to opt in. You have to opt into like, Hey, I will allow you to get all the data of all my browsing information and everywhere I go for, you know, point zero 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 or for x amount of way so you could say like hey yep. you know i'm going to opt into this program that consensus is running uh to you know for rewards and that's where i think something could make sense in the future that's like what basic attention token was supposed to be about where they've got your attention your, your basic attention token is what was rewarded for giving you the information of your browsing history for watching ads and that sort of stuff. So I think there's already been proposed solutions. I think they were going to do this as long as they could until people noticed. Yeah. Uh, and then everybody made a big deal about it. There's workarounds. But I think this is always going to be part of the internet, right? Mm -hmm. Like the digital world that we live in, you're going to be tracked. You're going to be... That's that's the value of a lot of the propositions and a lot of the applications that are being used. They take that information and they sell it. So there are better models where we should be able to sell it to them and maybe they could sell it at a higher price, you know, in a marketplace model. But I think it's going to take a long time for us to get that figured out. 
Um, and I, I don't, I just, I don't see a posh, a, uh, a great answer to this situation right now. What do you mean? What, what answer? Like what, I mean, what is everybody going to stop using all, you know, like basically MetaMask was a great, and it, it really, it's what the problem is seeing great products get bought by these kind of people. Cause MetaMask is a great thing. That's really, uh, onboarded a ton of people. So mm -hmm. many people's first experience with crypto, especially that wasn't Bitcoin first. Anybody yep. whose first experience was with an Ethereum or NFTs was pretty much through MetaMask. Mm -hmm. Like it works great. It's simple. You can do swaps. Like it, it can work on a lot of different extensions. It's a great product. Yeah. But now it's got this, you know, so what does everybody just stop using MetaMask? Or well, is yeah, everybody sure. going to create a custom RPC? Like, no. Like, so what is the the, the best solution? And, and there's I a lot of really alternatives that are just as good, if not better than MetaMask, Trust Wallet being one of them. And I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison, but I, I'm willing to bet um, all of my Doge miner profits for this month that if you do a side-by-side -side comparison of, you know, popular NFT wallets, Trust Wallet, NAMI Wallet, whatever, and MetaMask, MetaMask has the most onerous KYC and data selling stuff in, in their terms of service hmm. because that's all this is. This is just KYC. This is just this the slow drip of pulling your rights away and ruining your privacy. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing to remember: privacy is a long driveway, right? Yep. Anyway, like you want to be separated from people just so they're out of your business and you have less contact and you're able to uh, adjust contact with people. So always think privacy is a long driveway. Who has the longest driveway? Rich people, because they value, they understand the value of privacy. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, I bet you in two years before the next bull run, MetaMask is going to go full KYC because Ethereum is owned top down from big banks and big banks want KYC. So this is not good for crypto. Everyone should stop using MetaMask. There's no point in doing custom RPC. Just don't use it. There's way better ones out there than MetaMask. So mm. Nick, given the that guy who's also a founder of Ethereum, how does that affect your opinion of Ethereum? I mean, as soon as they went proof went proof of stake in the way that they did proof of stake, you, mean you can the do the great centralization event. The great centralization. Yeah. As soon as they centralized their own blockchain, I was done with them. Um, you can make proof Hell of stake yeah. decentralized the way like Cardano does and whatnot, and even Avalanche oh, to a point. To me. But Joe Lubin like speaks at Davos consistently. Mm -hmm. He's on stage with um mark what's his face from salesforce he's a communist and then you know klaus klaus the Nazi. Schwab, yeah harari. so he's there he's yeah. The, yeah harari who's i don't know he's not even a human being uh he's there he's pushing forward uh, these laws these frameworks for cbdc's and he talks about blockchain and distributed ledger he doesn't talk about crypto that is the tell that's mm -hmm. the language tell when you start talking about distributed ledger you're basically a communist at that point <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know, for um, you know, if you go through all the Davos or a bunch of Davos talks, do your own research and listen to their wording and how they speak about crypto. Yep. It's exactly that. It's just uh, decentralized ledger systems. But other than that, the main focus is destroying the privacy aspect, painting all public citizens as criminals right yep. out of the gates. You're already a criminal, and yep. you no longer have the choice of privacy. And yep. this is how. We are going to destroy it. This is how they geolock your money with yeah. a CBDC. And no one gives a shit about privacy until you're getting locked up in these uh, prison camps, you know, uh, quarantine camps. But look how safe they looked. They, I mean, they're super safe. Uh, what, didn't Dwight D. Eisenhower <laughs> say the, the most secure you can make a population is by throwing them in prison? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did he really say that? He's, that's, <laughs> that's a paraphrase, but that's statement. it. He yeah. says, yeah, if you want to be safe, completely safe, be in prison. Yeah. Well, I, I agree. Privacy is definitely really important. It is, but it is a tough issue when it's a tough sell. You know, governments don't want privacy. Nope. The yeah. people that have theirs. the most control don't want privacy. That's how they maintain control. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, and the number one insight they have into all of our lives, whether we know it or not, is our spending habits, our transaction habits. I mean, if we were watching. Uh, Everybody should definitely watch. Uh, I think it's called FIFA Uncovered or Unveiled or oh, yeah. uh, FIFA mm -hmm. Revealed or something like that. It's on Netflix right now. It's trending. Uh, it shows all the corruption uh, within the FIFA. Or not all of it, but it gives you a glimpse into some of the corruption within FIFA. Uh, and it is all basically it's a giant global money laundering front all For around sure. the world. But the way they ultimately come down on the people through the banking system yep. because they require, they're talking about like, oh, you know, for these bank transactions to happen, they're all required to be mirrored in a U.S. bank so we can have, full, and they're talking about a central bank, basically, mm -hmm. like the mm -hmm. central bank has to have complete insight into all these transactions. So in order to move money from Swiss 
to um, uh, Trinidad and Tobago. It had to go through New York Bank, and that's what they used <laughs> basically to get jurisdiction. Okay, hey, you're basically you're using U.S. banks or U.S. money system to launder this money. We're going to come after you for wire fraud, that's tax crazy. evasion, all this different stuff. So that's uh, crazy. And and ironically, it was just because we were mad that we uh, lost the bid uh, to Qatar this year, which it was clearly corruption. And it was clearly clearly bought. Yeah. Uh, but it'll really start giving. You watch that documentary; it'll start. Uh, and they start, talk about the issue of sports washing. It will really give you sports washing. Yeah, it'll wow. it'll make you look at the both the Olympics and the World Cup in a completely different light when you look at the political tie-ins and all the different stuff because um bill clinton showed up to the bid yeah bill clinton <laughs> bill clinton was there in 2010 to for the united states bid, bid to get the money like and that's how you start to realize like man wow. there's some shady stuff going on here and yeah it it's bizarre and again it all went sideways in 1974 uh so you know that that has enough interesting stuff with it same with the, like basically from the beginning for the first like 20 30 years of the world cup it was a pretty small mom and pop you know club between these groups like get together and play a game all of a sudden in the 70s boom it turned into this huge money thing <laughs> coca-cola right in the middle of it adidas right in the middle of it it's kind of yeah. kind of weird how all that stuff happens mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um also big news speaking of uh big banks that we hate that are trying to steal our industry fidelity officially opens retail crypto Blech. trading accounts which actually Blech. this is a pretty Blech. big deal it's it's we don't like fidelity but this is a huge um this could be a big buy pressure uh, mm -hmm. and it's uh, opening fidelity obviously uh handles trillions of dollars worth of customer funds if they're opening retail crypto to trading accounts it means people that have fidelity can just go in and buy spot exposure to bitcoin mm. pretty big deal it will yep. create a lot of buy pressure in a bull market this would immediately send the price up yep. you know 10% in a bear yep. market it's not going to affect the price at all so this is another um at least it's not for only accredited investors now. I mm -hmm. mean, got yeah. to the hat for them on that. That's At least good. they they let that open during the bear market to give this, regular people access. And this really pulls the rubber band back for how how stratospheric the next bull run is going to yep. be because all these people are going to be used to buying Bitcoin and then it, the supply is going to be cut in half. I'm like, oh no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just like Mayamo Lucifer just said, I mean, his company, you, you, you get required to use Fidelity as a pathway in certain instances, depending on what company you use. So, you well, know. and he said it's a 401k match, and that's yeah. that's one of their big services. So, many, many, many of the 401ks out there use Fidelity. So, if you and like if they're starting to offer options through their accounts to be able to, hey, I want to hold a little Bitcoin in my 401k. Yep. You can get exposure that way, just like we were talking about with Grayscale. It's going to open up a lot of money that can point, click, boom, buy. I'm going to just buy buy Bitcoin right now out of my retirement account because the price is down, and then yep. you know that can really big create. News. It, it's it's pretty. It is pretty big news. Like yep. like I said, in a bull market, it would send the price you know soaring. Today, you know, it's just going to do absolutely nothing. So I think Fidelity <laughs> is run by an Irishman. Is it? Yeah. Hmm. It feels like a weird joke. Yeah, I was gonna say it felt like there was something another line coming there, but uh, I don't know what it is. So <laughs> no, there was just like a 4chan meme about how Irish run all the banks. Uh, first time chat from Mr. McGoober. Did you guys see BlockFi is the SEC listed as a creditor in the bankruptcy filing? Any thoughts on that? I did see that. So uh, another thing breaking, BlockFi uh, filed Chapter 11 today. A lot of people realized they were likely insolvent. Mm -hmm. But this was interesting. BlockFi filing shows the firm owes the SEC $30 million from a settlement. So that means... Basically, the SEC came in and they said, okay, we're going to do an investigation of BlockFi and see if everything's in good working order. Okay, no, BlockFi, you violated some things. You're going to have to pay us $30 million. And so BlockFi said, okay, we'll pay you $30 million. And then they just <laughs> went on business as usual, and now all the customer funds are completely gone. But somehow the SEC is still going to get a $30 million check out of this. Oh, my God. Uh, of course. So Gary Ginsler protects no one, gets paid $30 million for his organization at out of bankruptcy filings how does yeah. that how does is that right or should should they pay that money back if he gets us all a pizza party i'm cool oh <laughs> i don't i don't think you want to go to a gary ginsler pizza party pizza it may not it may not be what you think it is <laughs> whatever yeah. he said there's extra ham and salami mm. i don't know what that yeah. means, though. god bj i don't know the sec wins a lot of money per year um i yeah. think mean steel Oh, steals, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they uh, definitely... So Tony Soprano. I can't remember. I think it's in the billions. I think they take, like... Well, that's what I'm saying. Should they, should they have claim to that money? Should they no. be able to be, you know, get 
a credit in this bankruptcy proceeding in in your opinion nick says no no i mean why why would they get any credit they're there to protect investors to stop these situations before they come to fruition <laughs> and they failed so they, don't they they failed yeah they failed and they're still owed uh what are we get out of is that money going to come out of our tax or you know like what where is the origination of this money that's going to pay Meat the party. sec while BlockFi is in bankruptcy, yeah. then we owe the bill because Customer they funds attack are gone. us. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. just, that's so far from. It's bizarre. The government has forgotten that they work for us. That's an honest thing that most people forgotten yeah, in the really country. They are supposed that. to work for us. We can still take control as people. They started by working for us. So, yeah, yeah I agree. Uh, yeah, it's pretty messed up in my opinion. I think it's uh, absolutely wrong. I think Gary Ginsler has completely failed at his charter as SEC uh, chairman. I don't think the SEC has done a great job specifically in crypto markets. I don't know too much about the traditional industry, but I would imagine from what I, from what I've heard, uh, it's not much better there either. They get paid to look the other way. Yep. They get paid to basically they get paid off to not do their job, uh, which is just a sad state of the world. I mean, to the point that it was even, even in the big short, there's a whole yeah. scene about it where they're like, wait a minute, these are the guys that are supposed to regulate you. Aren't these your friends? It's <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, party, you, know, right? you come over here for a couple of years, yeah. you do this, that, and the other, then you get and you play the part, you get this big job over there. Like it's all it's almost like Sam's text messages to the Vox Media people. He's like, Oh yeah, it's all this this big game that we play. It's all fake. Like we all know it's yeah. fake. And you know, you just do what you're supposed to do, say what you're supposed to say, and you take money from the stupid people. Like yep. it's great, you know, and it's mm. it's it's bizarre. I, I need to go back mm. and watch that again because mm. that is such a great movie. Uh and that that scene is very, I like. It seems comedic in the movie, mm -hmm. but it's literally the world we live in. And it's you know, after seeing what was happening, like they're gonna, there's gonna be that same scene happening again with crypto and right. Sam and Alameda and all those people. They're talking to Gary Ginsburg and say, "Oh no, it's great. You know, you just we just paid him, we just sent him a couple million dollars over here. We just bought this place over there. We just booked this over here. We donated money to these people, and now we're all good. You know, we don't have anything to worry about. We're gonna go hang out in the Bahamas and uh, get high and screw. You know, right. so in what let's go world, make that money. In what world does a brand new exchange that has skyrocketed up to the number two spot in crypto exchanges in a very short amount of time and also involved with politics and paying off politicians get a no action relief from the only company that can physically do anything to them like that's just insane it's Living bizarre in america yeah, exactly that's why that's why they call it crony capitalism here in the yeah, united states yeah. if anybody says capitalism has failed it is not true capitalism it is not free market capitalism that we experience here in the world today it is mm -hmm. crony capitalism where the people at the top like to pretend the market is free and open and that everybody has a chance but they're the ones pulling all the strings the fed yep. of the world opening and tightening the valve changing and manipulating the market is not capitalism if we experience true market capitalism there'd be a lot more pain for a lot of people out there which is what the crony capitalism is trying to prevent but there'd be a lot more opportunity for people out there too if only so, there was a well currency said. outside of that oh hey. yeah hmm. if if only if we could choose uh, our own uh, free world currency and, you know, something like Bitcoin, maybe something that's decentral. Oh, crap. I just closed. Whatever I was just about to look at. Oh, wow. Wah, wah, End wah. of stream. I had something good. I had something good, and now I have no idea what it was. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Sounds tinfoil if you ask mainstream media. Well, you know, thankfully we don't. Yeah. Mainstream media, it's, it's good to pay attention to where they're trying to lead you into, though. Just to, you have to really kind of step outside of... Um, you have to get a third person objective point of view. It's difficult to do because everyone's got polarized opinions, but what? Um, yeah. yeah, they'll try to push you into a narrative, uh, as we've seen over the last two years that will be very lonely and mm -hmm. very controlled. So think for yourself, do your own research. Yeah. Always. There you go. So, uh, if somebody was going to, if somebody was new to crypto, Bitcoin, all this stuff today, and you're, they hear the phrase, do your own research, mm -hmm. where would you start? If you drew, where's the first place somebody should go just other than this channel, you know, if you guys don't aren't subscribed, please uh, like, follow, subscribe, do all the things, uh, check out BitBoy Crypto everywhere, blockchain basement everywhere. But other than this channel, mm -hmm. where, where would you send people to, uh, quote unquote, do their own research? Erickson says BitLab Academy, great place. Yeah, absolutely. For like, Crypto, um, everything crypto, BitLab, we're building out an insane amount of content that's very specific for the crypto realm. But why crypto? I think you would look at inflation data and history, look at why Bretton Woods happened to begin with mm -hmm. after World War II, look at the history of uh, fiat currency first to make mm -hmm. that decision on if you are 
still a believer in fiat after you learn more or if you're looking into disruptive tech that um, will, in my opinion, likely change the face of the earth. Um, that's what I would say is to look at the uh, fiat and inflationary data dating all the way back to 1930, at least. 1930, um, huh? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. There you go. I think that's really good. That's the best place to start. You can't start learning about new money until you understand the money system that we're in today. Mm -hmm. And that money system is what sparked the change, the revolution that is Bitcoin, that is new digital currency, that is the free money market, the free market money of the internet free money market sounds like a mm -hmm. new uh, product that your uncle's like gonna sell real estate tj do you have any book recommendations or places to start if to do your own research yes uh book recommendations i have so many the but, creature uh, of jekyll island uh the creature from jekyll island <laughs> is not a specific crypto book but it will help you understand uh the ethos i would say of crypto this the the logic but great one um uh, Bitcoin Standard, a lot of people know, and the Internet of Money. I'd say Bitcoin Standard for the pure economics, and like I'd say it's a history lesson. Yeah, catching up to crypto. Go pre order that. Yeah. Uh, but um, Internet of Money by Andreas Santopoulos, the first one, volume one, I think helps people understand, kind of helps you think of it as a network rather than the way you've thought of it your whole life, like dollars and cents. I think getting out of that mindset of money. And thinking of a network for me was really big. Thinking of different layers of the internet and that sort of stuff was huge. And there's also a really good article I love. I've sent it to so many people. It's my number one thing for, um, let's see if I can find it. I think it's called Bitcoin Beyond the Bubble. It was written back in 2018. It was a New York Times article. There's also a documentary. So don't get confused with that. got this yeah so if you guys can find this this is one of my it's a decently long read um it's uh yeah you can go ahead and pull my screen back down uh yeah a uh, decently long read yeah new york times no fud there and that's a long time ago but it helped me really wrap my head around layers and they talk about when the internet was created, different protocols, you know, you had the information sending back and forth protocol, ICTCP and, you know, POP3 and a lot of the things that you use for email and all those kind of standards on the internet for communication. And a couple key layers that were missing was the identity layer and the payments layer. And that's when mm -hmm. it talks about Facebook and Google basically rose up to provide that third party service of being the identity layer on the internet, which is why so many uh, applications have you log in with Facebook, have you log in with Google, because Facebook probably knows or Google probably knows who you are better than anything else on the internet right now. So that was a really big takeaway for me was like, oh man, I understand like those are, you know, the money layer is missing. The identity layer is missing. If we could solve for those, then the opportunity becomes wide open of what we can do beyond that. So that was mm -hmm. a really good uh, article to read, but always digital gold. Um, there's so many good ones. Internet of Money, Volume 1, 2, and 3 now, I believe. You should start with the Cypherpunk Manifesto as well. There you go. That's I don't think, Is that an actual book or that you no, mean it's, that's a... It's, it's an a, email. It's a, just a two-page yeah. email. You can Google it. It's a Word doc. Um, but yeah. I haven't read that one. That'd be a good one. It's pretty... It's an easy read. Yeah. yeah. It says, uh, society cannot function without privacy. How many ETH to make a million in 2025? Zero. How many ETH, going ETH to, zero. to be a millionaire in 2023? ETH is not. Yeah, ETH is not going to zero. Uh, 2025. I mean, if you're talking, if you think Ethereum could get to $10,000 all time, you know, like if that would be your peak, you know, then just do the math. You know, you, know, you need a thousand, I guess. But a lot of... Uh, yeah. That's a lot of ETH. All right. A thousand? No, hundred. Hundred. Yeah. hundred ETH. But a thousand would be 10 million. 10 million let's, would work. Let's get that 10,000 ETH. Yeah. Let's go. That sounds good. Yeah. So, uh, or how many, e is that a, how many ETH to be a million in 2030? That's a great question. Uh, 2030, I have very strong confidence ETH is going to be one of the top performers for 2025. 2030 is when I could see maybe something like next cycle. I'd like to see another smart contract platform come up and attempt to rival Ethereum. I haven't seen anything yet, but I would love to see that happen. Like ecosystem-wise, I mean, not not 
throughput and tech, but like actual projects being built on it. And hey, you know, there, if there's X amount going on on Ethereum, there's at least 40 to 50% of that going on on another uh, blockchain. I would love to see that uh, yeah. because we need that in this market. We need multiple yeah. smart contract platforms competing against each other. Yep. I think uh, now that TradFi is in control of Ethereum, development of Ethereum is going to slow down to a crawl because they're too they're too risk averse. It could be. Yeah, but the price the price speculation could go up dramatically. Like that's that's what's so interesting is price has nothing to do with tech in mm -hmm. a lot of this in a lot of this world. So, if you're attracted to things that make money, that's going to be different than things that might last the longest if that makes yep. sense, you know. And that's what well, yes, I still like Elrond. I'm actually very intrigued uh it's not even it's not e gold anymore or Elrond. It's it it's got a, a new thing, an X. Yeah, Multiverse X, I think is what it is. Or, awful yeah. name. Awful name. Or is it some, yeah, it is some, yeah. Because I, I can't even remember if that's right or not. But it, yeah. anyway, I am interested in keeping up my eye on that one. And in a variety of the other ones. I mean, you guys all know, you know, Avalanche and Polkadot and Cosmos, and there's a lot of other ones, you know, Cardano, obviously a big one that we like here on the channel. A lot of other ones that technologically can compete they just mm -hmm. to nick's point the development and the developers are the key you need developers making good applications on your chain you need people using those applications and you know we've seen DeFi is the place right now for ethereum if i think cardano with a native stable coin they have a chance to get some DeFi stuff That's going so great. if DeFi starts taking off on cardano next year we could start getting somewhere, but right yeah. now, um, yeah, Cosmos best layer zero. I, I tend to agree, you know, but we'll have to see. Again, you need applications on it. You need an ecosystem, and you need it to to interact. And Ethereum's just got a pretty big lead on that. Not saying they can't uh, have that replaced, but development takes time. New applications take time. New innovation takes time. Uh, so yeah, I th and speaking of time. That's all the time we have today. Oh, so, hey, talk about a transition. Nice segue. Hey, we, yeah. we raid and hit. Network uh, yes, gaming? for the gamers out there, we're going to be raiding Hit Network Gaming. I believe I don't know what they're playing today, um, but yeah, hang out with them. Uh, give them a little crypto tips. We know we know the basement crew is definitely the smartest crew in crypto. So uh, teach them a little bit about some uh, some crypto stuff. Drop some knowledge on him and uh, Five seconds. have fun. Stay safe out there. Thanks for coming. See you later. Guys. Stack sack. Happy Monday. Total. Bye.